Well, we need to make sure that uh, children are safe and responsible users of technology. So that underpins everything that you do. So everything in the computing curriculum, the computer science, the cross-curricular technology, it's great that the children can use those things, but what they really need to be able to do is use everything safely and responsibly. And so digital literacy underpins everything they do in the curriculum, but also in their wider lives as well. I think it's something that schools see as important. Obviously, they see safeguarding as really important. Sometimes it's understanding how you can actually implement that digital literacy effectively to all children across all the age ranges. So in the past, digital literacy has been taught where there's been some repetition in some year groups where children have gone over the same things and not necessarily the progression. So what schools have really needed is an overall framework that guides them through from the youngest to the oldest to make them safe, responsible users of technology. It, it is, the digital literacy essentially is behaviour. It's uh, children need to know how to behave using these ever-changing platforms that they come. So, so different technologies, different apps uh, will come and go, but the behaviour and the choices that they make that sit behind them will always be the same. So we want to, we want to ingrain that in children that they are making informed decisions about their behaviour. In terms of the curriculum, it can be a bit of a squeeze to actually fit computing into a, a digital literacy into the computing curriculum. So a case in point, the, uh, the National Centre for Computing Education curriculum has six strands and each strand encompasses one half term. So we've got a lesson a week and that doesn't really cover digital literacy. There are elements of digital literacy there, but it's not a digital li literacy framework. So some schools do find some time to actually add that in. They, they actually find time in their curriculum to do digital literacy in a computing uh, slot. But with that overlap with behavior, what some of the schools do is find a place for that in PHSE. So it does vary from school to school. As long as the children are being taught that in their curriculum in a progressive way, then everybody's happy. There, there are massive overlaps in digital literacy in all areas of the curriculum. So, for example, if we take English, you've got uh, the bias, plausibility, uh, under, uh, fake news is all over at the minute. And children being aware of that fake news uh, and being able to, to critique it is quite important. So there's a massive overlap with an area like English. And as they say for history, history is always written by the, by the victors, isn't it? And there's always more than one side to a story. So there are so many possibilities in history for looking at different ways of approaching something that's happened. So being able to do it in the context of another subject is vital because the more the children are exposed to understanding um, that you can have bias and you can have fake news, the, the better. I think the thing that makes Project Evolve stand out for us is uh, it's, it's foundation upon education for a connected world. So education for a connected world provides um, teachers with a framework that they can actually uh, equip children. It tells teachers what children need from early years through to the age of 18 to be safe, responsible digital citizens. And so Project Evolve actually provides the activities on the back of that. So in the past, there are, there are lots of great resources out there, but those great resources aren't a full framework. They don't give that progression from the earliest years till when children leave full-time education. Project Evolve does do that so that you're not going to worry too much about repeating activities that somebody else has done before, things that are very similar. So the children will get a really great balanced diet across all the eight strands of Project Evolve as they work through school. And the teacher and the computing lead and the safeguarding lead will know that the children have got, um, they, they've, they've got coverage in all those disparate areas in digital literacy. It's got real momentum. Schools love it. Schools, um, the, the teachers that I speak to think it's great because it gives that framework. What you need um, in computing, in, in computing, but also in, in uh, the safeguarding curriculum, what you need is you need that progression 
you need that overall framework rather than individual lessons where you're hitting things or you know you're doing safer safer internet day is great um but as lots of people have said every day safer internet day so um what we need to make sure is that teachers have got coverage they can give the tools to all the teachers in their schools to do the job and this does it and you can get that overview as a subject leader um, so um, both as a computing subject leader but also as somebody that's looking at online safety in school to make sure that the children have got full coverage in their curriculum I think some of the things that have surprised me is the different ways schools have used it. So, for example, um, some of our schools have taken, this, this was before uh, knowledge maps. Uh, some schools looked at it and thought, wow, that's a lot. So they've actually picked to make sure they've got coverage of the strands, but they've not done every lesson for every year group. Some of the schools have done that. They have done every lesson for every year group. I was speaking to a school two days ago, and what they do is they start every computing lesson with a project, a project Evolve resource at the start of the lesson. So they've used it in that way. So it's such a versatile tool that you can use it in different ways. I think one of the other things that has surprised me is when schools have taken it and they have added their own outcome to it. So they've blended this with other lessons and they've taken examples of other uses of technology such as making short film and they've added what they've learned in Project Evolve to a digital artifact such as making a film, creating a poster, things like that. Yes, um, every time I work with schools we talk about knowledge maps and most schools have come across them um, but there are occasionally schools that haven't. They're starting to implement them now, and I think it really helps with that idea that you're targeting the areas where the children may be uh, less familiar, where they might be a bit more vulnerable. So um, the knowledge maps are great. And of course, you can do a knowledge map again, and you can look back at your baseline after you've done it to see your improvement. So it's great for being able to track your impact, to see the impact that you've had in your teaching.